Hello, welcome back to Fred up in the computer room. Still playing with SDRs at the moment. And to start off, I'd like to thank two people that left comments on one of the previous videos when I was trying to get this RTL SDR to work. And that was Ray Miller and also Tony Smith. And they recommended that I download SDR++, which is what you see on the screen now. And they said that that should work with this little clone here, this RSP1A, we think it's an RSP1A clone that uh, I'm trying to get to work to do a review. And I've just downloaded this this morning, I've not had a lot of chance to play with it, but I can see the logic in this SDR++ straight away out, out of the box. It seems a lot easier to use than SDR Sharp. There's a lot less controls on the main screen. I know you've got a lot of sub menus and things. And as you heard there, currently just got it connected to this cheap RTL SDR, which was the one I didn't recommend. I did recommend you go for the uh, new elec, but we are at the bottom end of the market. I'd like to see if I can get this working. And yeah, straight away, it's worked straight out of the box. In the past, it hasn't been good enough. It hasn't met the expectation. And that's just on the broadcast FM now and seems to be working really well. We're just going to have a little flick up to the CB band on 11 meters and we'll see how this works, see whether it brings in the same interference for those AM stations. I haven't got the Noelec AM filter fitted to this RTL, so it would be interesting to say, let's do that first. Right, that's on the HF side now, so it's not bringing in anything up here, so let's um, drop it down to 27 megs. There we go, CB band. So yeah, we have got some of these spurious signals coming in. Let's zoom in a little bit. Let's have a little listen. Let's just flick it on to twice on AM at the moment. Yeah, let's just have a listen to some of these. Doesn't seem to be bringing in quite the same amount of response. I've got to play with some of the settings, I think. This is all new to me. Change to um, upper sideband. I don't know how you adjust the uh, water. There you go. Well, I tell you what, guys, this is my just initial reaction. I haven't played with all the settings, I can't find any DSP any digital sound processing, any filtering to knock out the hiss. But I tell you what, although it hasn't got as many settings as SDR Sharp, I will say that it seems to be cleaner. I don't, without using my AM block filter, I don't seem to be getting hard, well any, AM broadcast harmonics. If we take the zoom out here, this is right across the CB band and the 10 meter band. I'm not sure about that, that looks pretty strong. Let's go and have a listen to that. I really don't know, but what's coming in here are proper contacts, proper radio signals. You can see the way they're breaking up. That just might be a birdie or something. So, yeah, my initial impression is actually pretty good. So, well done. 
Ray and Tony that recommended it and anyone else that recommended it in the comments but this seems to be working quite quite well the gain control is a little bit sensitive if I turn up the the gain to where I'd like it I lose the waterfall it goes a little bit so I've got to keep the gain quite low and I'm using the tuner AGC at the moment oh, this might make it easier so yeah I'm using the tuner AGC if I turn that off then I can use manual gain just to give myself a little bit more control but it seems to be working pretty well on the tuner AGC and yeah that cheap RTL dongle it appears to be working so I, I still would recommend getting the Noelec version to be honest it's just that it's an extra £10 I still think it's better it's got better support on the software but that's the best that I've had with that cheap now the next one of course is this dongle here I want to try and get this working this one here now this is a uh, RSP1 clone and obviously the problem with this it wants to use SDR play SDR Uno I'm really trying to get this in to use a freeware, a non-licensed software. And I know a few of the guys have said, well, that's a little bit strange, Fred, because you're using HF radios and, and on. Yeah, I get that, I get what you're saying. But for this example, because I want to do a review on this, if I can get it working, I really don't want to use licensed software. I know everyone does, but I just don't want to. So I think we'll connect this up, um, both Tony and Ray said that I can use the this SDR++ so hopefully we can so let's connect the Antron up to this stop the SDR and see if we can get it work not going to use any band filtering for this we're just going to go straight straight into it straight into the 0 to 30 megs there and this uses a USB-C drive now the only thing is about drivers um, I don't know if there's a driver installed for this on the computer I, if you installed SDR Uno SDR play software I believe it would automatically install you a driver but we're trying to avoid that so I don't know if this SDR plus plus is going to recognize it that might be causing me a problem let's plug it in see if we get that long long noise yeah there, there's no driver sound there I have a feeling this isn't going to be recognized right okay if we go over to source here so this is a RSP1 maybe an RSP1A product um, I've got AirSpy, AirSpy HF got no s no um, rsp1 have i i don't suppose it will run straight on that will it let's just see if we can mm, no it doesn't want to doesn't want to run there does it Yeah, so oh, I'm stuck again, aren't I? This this is the problem with this. <laughs> there is a strong learning curve now. I, I did go I did go back to the manufacturer, on, and unfortunately, a lot of the reply that I got was in China. And I did ask them if there was a driver available, and they directed me to a Chinese forum, which I was able to translate but again all it does it just directs you to SDR play and that's what I'm trying to avoid I really don't want to use licensed software on the review so okay I'm a little bit stuck again so back to Ray and Tony or anyone else watching this video if you could possibly 
give me a little bit of advice here. These, these are my source selection. This is what I've got. And my RS, what is it, RSP1 is not in the source selection now. And it doesn't seem to recognize it as a uh, SDR, RTL. So, that's a shame. It's been about a week and a half. I've, I've been distracted doing other things. And the SDR++, it didn't work with this little banged SDR. I want to try and get this to work if I can. So thank you ever so much for the comments on the previous videos. And the next one we recommend is SDR console. So I've Googled that, found the page. The only problem with this download, this page, is there is so much advertising on the page itself. And there's so many different options to download which aren't the program. These are all other programs that I don't want to uh, install. <laughs> so I'm trying to find, I'm trying to find the actual download here. See a lot of these are just for WinZip and all sorts. So yeah, I'm going to go through this a bit slowly off camera and find the download. Another one you guys have recommended is CQRX or SDR. I haven't looked into that yet. We're going to try this one first. Okay, looks like I've got some instructions here amongst all of this advertising. It's a bit spammed out with advertising this website. It is a free program. You can obviously donate if you want to, if it works. Let's see if it works first. But anyway, let me sort out all of this junk on the screen, see if we can get it to work. Right, let's gonna connect up this little Banggood SDR. Now the problem I've got with this is that normally it doesn't seem to recognize it. I don't get any Windows driver. And that's the bit I found a bit strange. Guy, people on the comments said that no, it will detect it. You don't have to worry about that. It'll install the driver for you. That's what I'm hoping is gonna happen. It just seems a little odd to me. Oh, okay. I got that driver sound. I don't know if that come out on the on the computer there. So I've just got to identify it now. Let's just go to screen capture, make it a bit easier. So in the box we've got the search. Now we do know that we have got a SDR Play cloned device. So there's SDR Play. I've got version 1 and version 3. I've got an RSP1 clone. Okay, didn't like that one, did it? Let's try uh, version 3. Ooh. Oh! Hang on. This service is installed as part of SDR Uno, which I don't want to install, do I? Okay. Okay, so it, that hasn't found it either. Um, not, I don't quite understand what I'm doing here, Ed. Okay, so yeah, I've been playing with this for about 15 minutes and I can't get it to work. Obviously you go to definitions and you go for a search, it's not automatically detecting it and I've tried pretty much all of these and yeah, none of these, none of these seem to work. So if anyone's got some experience with SDR console because I've, I really don't know what I'm doing and it's just making me feel a little bit inadequate. <laughs> I'm really starting to feel very thick. I'm starting to feel very much like a guy in a shed. It's a bit demoralizing to be honest, but I can't get it to run. It won't detect it and I can't see anywhere where it is, is an option for an RSP1. So, uh, okay, I'm, I'm gonna stop this now and I'm just gonna try the CQRX program to see if that's any better. The good news is that I was getting the Windows driver noise 
when the thing was plugged in. I did just shoot back to SDR++ just to see if that would auto detect and it, it's not. There's a massive learning curve on this and um, yeah it's not easy. Okay I'm off to a good start on this one because I called it wrong. It's actually GQRX so it's an open source software defined radio receiver. That's good we can uh, we can work with that and the, the, the supports many SDR hardware available uh, spy, uh, supported devices so we're looking for really an SDR play device there you go SDR play and we're looking for the RSP1 which doesn't really show that does it Okay. Um, okay, so the problem is I can't see a Windows download. I'm, I'm wanting to think if it's Linux only. Um, I can search it. So um, I've had a quick look at GQRX installing Windows 10, and to be honest, guys, it's it's just going to be too com too complicated. I mean, I could probably sit here all afternoon and chug through it myself, but whatever I put up, ultimately, in a review for a product, I'm going to be looking at comments and questions for maybe years, years to come, and you kind of become a support page, and this is too complicated. It's obviously a Linux-based program, and it's a bit clunky to get it to work in Windows. I'm sure it does work in Windows, but... Yeah, this is it's going to be too much for me to take on to try and support it. So this one isn't going to work. I'm going to draw this one to a close. I feel it's another foul video. Um, I seem to be doing a lot of these on SDR. Um, yeah. So what can I say? Any help in the comments, I would appreciate. And if I do get some help, I will come back on this and um, have another go. See if I can get it to work. As always, thank you for your view time. There's the old thumbs up from Fred in the show. We've got a little bit of sun coming in the uh, back bedroom window at the moment. It's been a very rainy and blustery March afternoon whilst I'm making this video. So there's the thumbs up from Fred in the shed. Just take a second and give me give it to me back down below. I really would appreciate that. Thanks, guys. But as always, look after yourselves. Take care. Catch you on the next one. Cheers, guys.